I was excited to be invited back to the Pebble headquarters for the latest updates on their electric travel trailer, the Pebble Flow. Part one of this series is linked in the description and goes into great detail about the product and includes an enlightening interview with the company's founder, Bing Ray Yang. I'd recommend watching that video first if you haven't yet. This time, I'm meeting with the company's CTO, Stefan Solium, to talk about the latest upgrades. Today, what you do is you take your car, you hitch it up, and then you need to back it up. That's a hard, this is just physics. It's really a hard problem to solve. It takes time to build skills. Yeah. You have solutions out there that try to improve that, make it easier for you. We said, no, we want to change the game. What we do now is we have two motors over there, and then we have this app. So what we do right now is we go to remote control. So I just push this button, and now you have a first layer of security. You don't want anyone to just right, grab the to. app, yeah. exactly, <laughs> the kids taking it up and then play around. So obviously there are other layers of security as well. This is just the first one. Then touch ID, and then you enter the screen. Now this is just a rendering. It will be slightly different in production, but the controls are the same. And what happens? So here, here on the right side, this is really the controls. Forward, reverse, pivot left, pivot right. You see, I'm touching it, nothing happens. The reason for that, again, you might drop this or inadvertently touch buttons. You don't want this to just start moving. Sure. <laughs> so what you do is you have here the thumb. So as soon as I, I, I'm pressing this, this will light up. Ah, okay. So now, if I start moving, that's what happens. And it's really, really easy. Uh, here I can change the speed as well. It's really, really easy. Going forward, and then you can start and pivot. And what we try to do now, and it's so good that we are inside here, it's raining outside. Yes. Imagine that you need to turn this. That's incredible. It's very, very convenient. It's very easy. And to be perfectly honest, it's actually fun. Now I just turn it around. Look how fast and how easy it was. It's completely the opposite direction. That is incredible. All yeah. right. So now, just, so I put my finger down, yeah. and then I can press this left, left rotation button. Exactly. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. And it actually does it at a decent pace. You know, like it's it's quick enough, but it doesn't seem like scary quick. So now you can back it up a want, little bit. You can back it up a bit. You can still come this way if you want. That's also fine. <clears throat> yes, so we want to keep it at most at walking speed. Um, don't want to do it too fast. Now, this is a bit, this was a bit slower than that when you are moving forward and backwards. And especially if you are in a larger area, that may feel a bit slow. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, you can you can change that. And then I heard there sounded like a parking brake or something engaged. So after you're done moving it, you lift your finger off. Does that automatically? That's right. So the vehicle actually has three types of brakes. It has regenerative braking. So when you are braking, you are charging the battery. This is the good type of yes. braking. The second one is automotive grade friction brakes. And then the third one is the parking brakes. And that's exactly what you heard. And that's why with a pebble flow, you don't need wheel chocks anymore. Yeah, that's that's great. That is a nice convenience of it. Um, now, I noticed when I was spinning it around too that the tires kind of looked like they were the camber was a little bit outward. So, it, was there a specific design as far as the motors go in order to accomplish the goal of being able to move it in a three hundred and sixty degree fashion? The fact that we have a single axle and this is really a high capacity axle with the motors allows you to do the 360 degrees motion. The, the amount of agility that you are getting from such a configuration is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sure is. And it's exciting to see this remote capability to be able to move it around. Because there's a lot of cameras and a lot of other sensors that are yeah. engaging in this. That, that's right. So we are heavy on vision. Obviously, some, there are some other sensors that we use as well. For this, we are using an NVIDIA Orin X platform. This is an AGX platform, which is really automotive grade. Uh, we have even telematics units, so we can come in and uh, send you new software, again, making your vehicle smarter and smarter. The same way we can even diagnose if, for instance, your battery is, is close to depletion or it has issues, we are able to diagnose this and contact you on how to essentially service or preactively service um, the vehicle. Very cool. And 
I heard that there is a magic hitch feature that will allow you to just have the vehicle itself pull up to your tow hitch receiver and connect it. Yeah, let's check it out. Okay, great. <laughs> and now we are going to magic hitch here, like that. And now this is the screen. Hitch is lighting up. Let's press it, see what happens. It found the ball. There you go. Now. Wow. You heard the APB? That is incredible. Okay, and now you will see how it connects. So on the top of the coupler, you will yep. see this coming up. And, the clip. and there you go. Yeah, now it's, it's attached. completely connected. Now it's just lowering, so it's putting that pressure down on the Exactly, on the tongue. tow vehicle and then pulling up the wheel. Wow, that is uh, extremely convenient. <laughs> yeah, and we didn't get wet here, so yeah. that's just that alone. In this version, it will stop the wheel. In production, the wheel will go significantly. Up inside, okay. Exactly yes, right. gotcha. Exactly right. So it's completely and, clear. And, and this is it. It's so simple. So this type of technology, I'm sure there are a lot of challenges you have to overcome in order to implement it. So can you talk about what you've had to overcome in this case? I mean, to be fair, they've picked... It seems like a good person to <laughs> take this on because you're with your experience, you have worked on Apple products in the past. You've also worked, as far as I understand, in the automotive business with Volvo, amongst other experience. So can you talk a little bit about the challenges you've overcome, but also kind of your experience that brings you to this journey with Pebble? Right. So what you saw here just a moment ago, it's a full robotic stack. It means you need to have perception, you need to have planning and controls, just what you have in a typical robot or a typical self-driving car. Now, there are quite a few things that are new. For instance, hitching, the hitch ball, detection of this hitch ball, having a vehicle with just a single axle mm -hmm. and have that control to a very, very precise location, that's very, very challenging. Now, on the other hand, obviously, we have a great team of software engineers. Mm -hmm. We have robotics engineers. By the way, if you are interested, just shoot me an email. We are working on this a lot. And one of our guiding principles here at Pebble is that the technology should just work. The product should just work. Behind the scenes, this means a tremendous amount of work and effort. It's very, very nice when, you know, we just experience it. There is a lot of effort behind it. So, yeah, this is a big challenge. And, and yeah, we want to have that experience to our customers. And we want to launch this product. Yeah, absolutely. Now, another thing is uh, you are looking for more people to get on your team to be able to help you build this and get to production. Because as far as I understand, you're going to hopefully be able to reach production before the end of this year. Is that still That's standing? That's okay, correct. That's exciting. Now, you said you want it to just work. And speaking of that, we've heard that there are some other electric RVs in the space that are converting to go to NAX as the charging standard. Are you going to be incorporating that type of charging standard in the Pebble once you move to manufacturing, or what's your stance on that? We definitely want to incorporate that on long term. If you are able to do this by start of production, this is still something that we are looking into. How do you see this change in camping for your lifestyle in particular? Oh, 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 it's just so many ways. Um, the fact that I have so much power, so much energy, I can really go to places in, in the high Sierras where we went just a couple of years ago and we were there for a week and I had to kind of manage my batteries just to get through the day. Mm -hmm. I will not have that problem anymore. Amazing. Just the same campsite. When we came in, it was so difficult because actually I have a pretty large long truck. Mm -hmm. So it was very difficult to maneuver in with the pebble is going to be fun. Towing the pebble is such a different experience. It's so much more fun. It's so much easier. You know, going with the family to Napa and, you know, it's 
It's not a long drive, but when you are towing, it's a bit more stressful, but not with this. It's going to be so easy, just go, we can get a ways. You know, uh, I just can't wait. Now, I'm also very excited because I have a Rivian R1T Max Pack, and we also have a Cybertruck that we hopefully plan to be able to tow something like this one day. Now, we've heard in the past that it is a little bit more challenging with EVs because it eats away at the range when you're towing anything behind you. And a lot of times it's aerodynamic profile, but as I understand it, with the battery pack in this, this will be able to self-propel to some extent. So you've probably done some testing in regards to how that is affecting range in many different ways. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm really, really excited about that. Um, so towing with an EV, exactly like you said, it doesn't matter uh, who is the OEM, it's just physics again. Mm -hmm. You are going to lose a loss of range. Mm -hmm. It was really, really fun for me. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had the opportunity to drive the Cybertruck and the R1S um, with the Pebble. And it was, it's, it's really, really cool. Just, you know, an anecdote from my side, the Cybertruck, that thing is really a beast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but when you pull 6,200 pounds, it's like a beast in chains, you know, because you can still really feel that it's struggling a bit. I mean, it's it's much better than most, but sure. but it's still you feel that it's slowed down. And then when we turn on easy tow, it's just completely different. It came, it comes alive. And you can kind of select as far as like how much you want it to assist, correct? That's correct, and that will be a, a, a very interesting program because. In the end, it's a zero-sum game, right? So you need to decide, what is it you want? Do you want to have a full battery pack when you arrive to your campsite? Or no, I want to extend my range because when I get to the campsite, I actually have uh, electricity, I can plug it into charge. So you will get this flexibility and then you will be able to choose. Yeah, and the, also the good opportunity is that you have solar on the top of it, so you'll be able to maybe even expend that energy by getting to your campsite and then replenish a certain amount when you get there. So that if you're staying there for a long time and you don't necessarily plug it in immediately, you have a little bit coming in from that regard. That's right. So you have over a kilowatt of uh, solar on the roof. You have a 45 kilowatt hour battery. So yeah, you can be, you know, in my use case, when I was up in the ICRAs, I would not have had a problem to be there for a week. So. As far as the solar goes, will there be an opportunity to plug in like external solar to be able to add to that? Yeah, so that's very, very interesting. We heard a lot of feedback um, on that topic. We have um, a very good uh, online community that we are very proud of. And yes, this is something we are looking into actively. Speaking of that community, it is really interesting. I'm a part of it. It's on the Discord channel. So I'll, I'll link it in the description below if you guys want to add to it. But what's great is from what I've heard so far is that you've made some changes in the closer to the production intent vehicle because of the feedback from the community. So can you touch on a couple of the things maybe that have been adjusted because of that? That's right. So uh, there are a couple of changes that are rolling in already. Some has been have been implemented as, uh, as well. For instance, one example is the cabinets, the overhead cabinets, mm -hmm. the way they are opening right now. Um, it's essentially they are opening uh, downwards, which if you are not tall enough, you might have issues reaching, reaching all the way back. Sure. So now we change that based on the input from, from our customers and now it will open up. Another change that we have done is um, the plumbing system. Okay. So when we designed the vehicle originally, we put in a combined gray yeah. and black tank. So it was one combined tank. And based on all the feedback that we have received, we have actually split it. So now you have a fresh tank, a separate gray tank, and then a separate black tank. Okay, and ha have the sizes changed in that? Uh, the the, the sizes changed slightly. The fresh tank went up to 40 gallons and the black tank is around 13 gallons and then we have the gray tank 37 gallons. So with this tablet to be able to control the vehicle, what is the Wi-Fi capability or the situation as far as the communication goes with the device and the vehicle itself? Yeah, so this device is essentially the control center of the vehicle, it comes with the vehicle. The good thing here is that you can com communicate with the vehicle in the middle of the desert. You don't need any 
outside communication. Yeah. So it's really direct to the vehicle. Very, very good. All right, so speaking of Wi-Fi capability, you'll be able to have Wi-Fi capability inside the vehicle. So you can kind of use this as like a remote workspace when you're out camping and things like that if you do need to. So can you talk about that compatibility? Because as far as I remember from the last time, that was going to be a Starlink, a SpaceX Starlink type of connection. You will have an interior hotspot, but this device is communicating on a completely different channel with mm -hmm. the vehicle. That interior hotspot can be connected to Starlink, and then you can bring your own Starlink system, and then you can use it wherever you want. And yes, the idea is that you should be able to work or uh, have a vacation anywhere you want, and you should be able to be connected. Well, I'm super excited because I have a reservation for one, and I'm looking forward to being able to go out into the camping environment and then be able to edit my videos right in the pebble flow and be able to experience what it's like taking this out in nature but still accomplishing everything that I need to accomplish so thank you for showing us the updates on it and we look forward to seeing the production version and thanks for spending time with us Stefan thank you so much mm -hmm. well thank you guys so much for watching this latest video and if you want to learn more about the pebble flow then see the link in the description below otherwise until next time drive fly ride go, go electric, electric.